So, so last time we talked about Dirac equation. So the Dirac equation has the following form. Gamma mu, partial mu, minus m, psi equal to zero. Okay? So, so here we have two spaces. So one is your standard physical space time. So with x mu, and then we have another internal space, which is labeled by the index of the psi and the gamma, which I suppressed here. So psi should be considered as a four vector. So alpha equal to one, two, three, four, and the gamma mu should be considered as a matrix. Okay, four by four matrix. Okay, and so so this space labeled by, by alpha, so this is called the spinner space. Okay, uh, this is called spinner space. So uh, so you have to be careful that now we have two uh, uh, spaces intertwined together. Okay, one is your ordinary space time, and so this is a function of the space time. But it carries its own index. Yeah, uh, uh, carries its own indices. And so this is uh, uh, a matrix equation. So all together, there are there are four four equations here for each component of psi. Okay, for each component of psi. And uh, yeah, so let me call. Let me just write this a little better. So this is x. Okay. So let me call this equation one, which has a use nature. And this gamma mu, they are not ordinary matrices. They satisfy this condition. Gamma mu, the anti-commutator, with nu equal to q eta mu nu. So that means different gamma matrices, when their index are not the same, they anti-commute with each other. OK, so if you, uh, 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 you pass them through, you get the minus sign. Okay, so they anti-commute with each other because when you not equal to new, the right hand side is zero, and uh, uh, when you pass through each other, you get the minus, sign. and the square of them, so gamma zero square you get the minus one because this is zero zero, it's minus one, and the gamma i square you just get one. Okay, so so this is very simple. Yes. Yeah, it's the identity matrix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, when I say uh, gamma zero square is minus one, it's also minus times identity matrix. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, um, and also, not all gamma mu are Hermitian. So, so the relation is that the, the gamma mu dagger is equal to gamma mu, uh, gamma zero, gamma mu, gamma zero. Okay? So, so again, from here, you can. Yeah, so this is just a compact way to uh, to, to write the uh, its properties. When you have when when mu is equal to zero, and then you have gamma zero times gamma zero square is minus one, and then you get the minus gamma zero tells you that the gamma zero is anti Hermitian. And then if you take the index to be i here, and then you have index i here, and then uh, 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 when zero and i, they are not the same, so they anti-commute. You can pass through this gamma zero, through this gamma i, you get a minus sign, and then gamma zero square give you another minus sign, so you get a one. So that means that the gamma i dagger equal to gamma i. Okay, so gamma i is Hermitian. Okay, yes? Uh, is there supposed to be like a, an i in front of like the derivative, or do we absorb the i into the so with this, so so eta mu mu here is mostly class metric. Uh -huh. So some people when they use say mostly negative metric, then there may be a, a i oh. in, in in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it depends on your convention in defining the gamma matrices. Okay, so in minus plus plus plus, no i. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Good. Other questions? Yeah, as I mentioned last time. Different conventions are allowing, so but you just stick one convention, should be fine. Stick to my convention would be fine. Uh, <laughs> yes. Sir, how do we get the expression for gamma mu dagger? Uh, 
Oh, yeah, this is just a compact way to write down that gamma zero is anti-hermitian and gamma i is hermitian. Yeah, yeah, just uh, uh, this just compact. Yeah, just this is useful so that you can treat all gamma mu in the same way. Yeah. So that you don't have to always separate them. Yeah. Good. Other questions? Okay. So last time we also said you have many, many choices for gamma mu, uh, 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 but they are all equiv uh, physically equivalent. And uh, so different choices they are convenient for different purposes. Okay, so often we just pick one of them and uh, depend, on, uh, uh, depend on the problem we are. Yeah, so that comes with a little experience. So uh, for certain problems, certain choices of gamma become more useful. Yeah, become more uh, uh, easier uh, to manipulate. Okay, good. So now let's talk about the uh, Lorentz covariance of the uh, Dirac equation. which we started a little bit last time. So, so Lorentz covariance means that the equation looks the same in all Lorentz frames, okay? Uh, so, so when you make a Lorentz transformation, so imagine you make a, a, a um, go to another frame, you start with your frame defined by this x mu. Now imagine you go to another frame which you make a Lorentz transformation. Okay, so the Lorentz covariance means you, it's your equation when written in this frame, uh, in terms of x prime mu, uh, have the same form. Okay, have the same form. So last time we talked about the scalar equations at the end. And, uh, and a lot of equation we have seen before is the, uh, is the Maxwell equation. Okay, so, so let me also very quickly mention uh, uh, for the Maxwell equation. So, so when you have a Maxwell equation, which is the story for the vector potential, okay? So now, in contrast, rec uh, remember, uh, for the scalar case, so, so last time, yeah, let me just uh, 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 write it down here. Last time we said for the scalar case, when you go to a different frame, the phi prime should be equal to, evaluate the new coordinate should be equal to phi x, okay? So this is the transformation for a scalar field. But now if you want to do Maxwell equation, so we have to think about how this a mu transform uh, under a Lorentz transformation. And now a mu is a vector, it's a full vector in, the, in space time, okay? And so, um, so that means that the uh, 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 a mu should uh, uh, transform also as the uh, 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 vector, okay? So, so this means that uh, when you go to new frame, a mu transform as lambda mu nu a nu x, okay? So, here, not only, so when a mu evaluate a new position, it can be written as a linear superposition of the value at your original position. And this linear, uh, this linear superposition by itself is a Lorentz transformation because a mu is a vector, okay? Uh, uh, because a mu is a vector. And uh, uh, so the, the, uh, that means just under Lorentz transformation, uh, the different components of a mu should also uh, a change under the transformation. Okay. So, so given this, so I will not uh, uh, show it now, just uh, uh, will uh, take a couple of minutes, but you should convince yourself, uh, try to check yourself, that the Maxwell equation which can be written, so example, uh, uh, as f mu, nu nu equal to zero, this implies, okay, that the partial mu prime in the new frame and then the f mu mu prime, f mu mu prime is uh, 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 obtained from this new uh, a mu prime, and these two equations are the same, okay, uh, are equivalent, just in one frame, and then when you go to a different frame, uh, then you get this equation. So equation have exactly the same form, okay, but now uh, it's in the new frame, okay. Good. 
So now let's go to Dirac equation. So now let's go to, uh, 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 go to Dirac equation. So in the Dirac equation, uh, uh, again, this psi, we need to ask how the psi should transform under Lorentz transformation, OK? But now this psi is a completely new object. So this is another, uh, it's not like in the, in the Maxwell case. We know this is a space-time vector. So you can easily guess how you should transform, OK? So now this psi, this spinner space is completely new, OK? So, so now we have to figure out how psi transform, OK? Uh, how psi transform. So, so let's suppose, OK? Suppose. Under low range transformation lambda, that the psi transform as follows psi prime alpha x prime, because now again you evaluate in the new position, new frame. Since this carrier index, in principle, this can be a superposition. In the, uh, you can uh, 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 mix them in the internal space. Okay, in principle, we can have form like this. Say for some matrix S, okay, which depend on lambda, okay? So in principle, you can have a transformation like this. Say, Say uh, uh, when you evaluate a new position, it's given by the value at the old position. But now you can make uh, 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 some rotations uh, in the internal space, just as here uh, for the for, for the Maxwell field. Okay, uh, just as here for the Maxwell field. So except, and uh, so suppose, suppose this as far, uh, this, and then the Lorentz covariance would be the statement. Say for some. Yeah, yeah, for some matrix. And then the Lorentz covariance then is a statement is the statement starting from one, from equation one, you should be able to find, go into the new frame, you have an equation like this, gamma mu, partial mu prime minus m psi prime x prime equal to zero. Okay? So you should get an identical equation, not identical equation two. You should get an identical equation, but now everything is in terms of prime. Okay, everything in terms of prime. So, so, so once you emphasize the gamma mu does not change despite a, a, a carry index mu, because gamma mu is just some constant matrices, okay? Just it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's just four matrices. Uh, it does not transform under any space-time trans. It, it, it's not dynamic or variable. It does not transform under space-time transformation. So, so gamma mu does not change, okay? Good. So now the question of the Lorentz covariance, where the Dirac equation is Lorentz covariant, boils down, okay, whether we can find such an S, okay, which the, uh, 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 whether, yeah, the question is can we find such an S, okay? So if we can find such an S, which this is true, then we say the Dirac equation is Lorentz covariant. And, uh, uh, and this is how the Dirac field should transform. Okay, uh, so this psi is normally called the Dirac field. Okay, uh, and this is how Dirac field uh, should transform. So, so psi is often called Dirac field. It's also often called spinner field. Okay, and uh, uh, it's, often, uh, it's also often called Dirac spinner field. And uh, anyway, and, the way, uh, and then that should be the way how it transforms. Okay, yes?
Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. In this case, so you, when you talk about transform of the scalar field itself, of course, it's just phi go to phi prime. And uh, 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 because that function changes, okay, uh, uh, that function changes. But here we are asking uh, 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 about the form of the equation in the new frame. And so, so when you go to the new frame, your function form change, but your coordinate also change. So that's why you need to, uh, when we say the covariance, you need to evaluate your new function in the new position. Yeah, 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 yeah. That means th uh, they look the same in different frames. Yeah. Yes. So should I think of S as a representation of lambda in this generic space? Yeah, exactly. Good, good. Exactly. That's the, that's exactly the right mathematical language. Uh, to talk about this, which we will uh, mention later. Uh, uh, at the moment, I didn't want to use mathematical language. Yeah, yeah, for those people who are familiar with group theory, indeed. So this S would be the representation of the Lorentz group in the, uh, in the spinner space. Good. Okay, so now let's try to find this S, okay? So before do that, let's first write what is a partial prime x mu. So recall, partial prime mu is, should be partial, partial x prime mu. This transforms the new coordinates. And from that transformation, you can easily figure it out, just chain rule. So this is the same, equal to partial, partial x mu and the lambda minus one new mu. Okay. Okay. So this is very easy to figure out because the uh, because the, uh, uh, they have to be uh, uh, the x mu multiply the x uh, partial x mu have to be a singlet. So so this transform as an inverse matrix. So this implies that the gamma mu partial mu prime should be equal to lambda minus one new mu gamma mu partial nu, okay? Let me just write it better. Okay? So with this preparation, then we can try to, uh, 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 try to see whether we can find the S from this equation, okay? No, yeah, uh, uh, find this equation uh, from what? So what we can do is that let's multiply the uh, equation one from the left by S, okay? So let's imagine we multiply S, uh, such a matrix. Again, uh, I always just uh, suppress the spinner indices and just uh, write in the matrix form. So let's just write gamma mu. So take that equation one, we multiply by S, okay? So, so we have two terms here. So this is a matrix in the same space as S. Okay, S act in the same space as gamma mu. So, so we cannot easily commute here. Okay, uh, uh, they, uh, normally they don't commute. But this, but M is a constant, so we can pass S through here. Okay, uh, we can pass through S here. So we can rewrite this equation as follows. We can write it as S gamma mu S minus one partial mu minus m S psi zero. Okay. So so for m, I, I, I just passed S through through, but for this term, I just inserted S minus one and S, and so yeah, it's the same. Okay. So now we can use this equation in here. Okay, because s times psi just equal to psi prime, x prime, okay? So now we get s gamma mu, s minus one partial mu minus m psi prime, x prime equal to zero. Okay, we just use that equation. Yes? Yeah, yeah, so that's the key I uh, uh, emphasized earlier. 
So, so x mu and psi alpha, they're in different space. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, so, so all this s and the gamma, they're all constant. They don't depend on spatial location. And so, uh, so partial mu does not act on s. Yeah, uh, for partial mu point of view, s is just a constant. It, it's a space-time constant. It only rotates. It, it only rotates psi at a single point. Uh, the, a different component of psi at a single point. Yeah. Good. Okay. So now we have this equation. So now we can compare this object with this object. Okay. Yeah, uh, in particular, this object is equal to that. Okay, so we conclude that one goes to two if s gamma mu s minus one equal to this object lambda minus one nu mu. Uh, I think. Yeah, I think I'm messing up a little bit notation here. Uh, gamma mu. Yeah, I think my index is a little bit wrong. Let me just make sure. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, here is a, a partial nu. Sorry, here is partial nu. So I need to exchange uh, 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 the mu and the nu index here. So mu and the nu, then gamma mu. OK? So, so, so this has to be equal to that. OK, so this has to be equal to that. And you need to, uh, uh, be, uh, to, to compare partial nu with partial mu. You have to exchange the nu and the nu here. Anyway, so, so this is the equation we have to satisfy. OK. So we have to find a matrix S which acts on gamma mu. Gamma mu is some bunch of matrices and give you like this. So as if the gamma mu actually, when you act on S, as, uh, as if gamma mu transform as uh, some Lorentz transformation. OK. Yeah, inverse Lorentz transformation. OK. So, uh, so we need to, uh, now let's try to find this S. So, so to do this, we, again, we use a trick which uh, uh, we have been using before. So, so how would you approach this problem? Good, good, good. Yes, yes. Just do uh, uh, infinitesimal transformations. Okay. So once you know how to do infinitesimal transformations, then you always know how to do finite ones. And infinitesimal ones, uh, uh, it's much, much easier to do. Okay. So now again, we consider. Lambda nu nu close to identity. Okay, so that means we write lambda mu nu as delta mu nu, which is the identity, then plus uh, omega mu nu, and take the omega to be small. Okay. And uh, uh, also remember, previously we discussed that omega mu mu, when you know the index, is actually anti-symmetric. Okay. So, so, and this is infinitesimal, so we take this to be infinitesimal and work everything to first order in omega. Okay, uh, uh, work everything uh, uh, to first order in omega. So similarly, the lambda minus mu nu just equal to delta mu nu, just give my minus omega mu nu, okay? So, so yeah, just to, to leading order in, in omega expansion, the inverse matrix is just given by that. So now we can try to, so, so since the S, so on the right hand side, when, when lambda is close to the identity, Okay, so uh, 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 so the right hand side is just the gamma mu. Okay, just uh, the identity does not do anything, just gamma mu, and then plus something proportional to omega. Okay, 
then that means that S must also have, uh, 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 when lambda is close to identity, means S must also have the structure to be identity and proportional to something linear in omega, okay? So, so, the, uh, so the S must also have this structure. Uh, 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 yeah, let me just, don't write the, the uh, index, just uh, directly write as identity. And then it should be something proportional to omega mu nu, okay? So, so from convention, we write this way. So it should be linear in omega mu mu and sigma mu mu. So sigma mu mu are a bunch of matrices, okay? So remember, uh, S is a four by four matrix. Uh, and so, uh, so, so omega mu mu is just some number, okay? Just some number. So, uh, so this will be a bunch of uh, uh, four by four matrices. So from each omega uh, uh, can, in principle, uh, uh, independently uh, 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 multiply some matrix. Okay, so this is the most general way to, pri uh, to expand this linear order in omega. Okay, so, uh, so this sigma is essentially just the first derivative of S respect to each omega mu. Okay, and this I over two is just convention. And similarly, the inverse is just co uh, corresponding you change the sign here to leading order in omega. Okay, so yeah, so I emphasize this, each sigma mu, mu is a matrix. Okay, should be understood as some matrix. Okay, in the in this spindle space. Okay, so now you just need to plug in this equation. Plug in this S and S minus Y into this equation. Yeah, just expand both sides to all the omega. Okay? And you equate the coefficients. You equate the coefficients. From that way, you determine the sigma. Okay? So, so let me call this equation star. Yeah, I'll call, uh, let me just call this equation three. So um, then to order omega mu mu to linear order, then, then equation three, if you, when you expand on both sides to omega, to order of omega and equate both sides, then you find the following equation. This is just a couple of lines algebra. So I urge you to do it yourself. So given by I, commutator lambda rho, gamma nu equal to eta lambda mu, gamma rho minus rho mu gamma lambda. Okay? So you get this equation. So the left-hand side is very easy to understand. So essentially you just, whenever you have a commutator, for people who have done this uh, 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 baker hausdorff etc., the first order you always get the commutator, okay? I, I, you always get the commutator, so that's where this commutator comes from. So the right-hand side, when you expand this, essentially you just get omega mu mu because we have to lower the indices, okay? So, so you have some eta here, okay? You have eta here, and uh, yeah, yeah, so that's how you get the right-hand side, okay? Uh, the reason you get two terms because it should be anti-symmetric uh, in the, uh, 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 yeah. Good. So now you just boil your stun to solve this equation. So if we can find sigma satisfy this equation, and, uh, and then, then, then we are done. OK, uh, and then we are done. So, so yeah, of course, this is uh, um, uh, now you, you do by trial and error. OK, now you do by trial and error. And, uh, um, the bottom line is that there's a solution, okay? So let me just write down the solution. And uh, uh, the nice thing about other people found the solution is that you can just check it, okay? So, so, so you can check this quantity. This solves the equation.
Okay, so 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 just you can plug this. So this is a commutator of gamma lambda and gamma rho. You plug into that, then you just evaluate this gamma matrices, okay, and you, uh, uh, use the um, use this kind of equation over and over, and you will find uh, uh, this is satisfied. Again, I will leave it as exercise for yourself, okay, and uh, uh, as exercise for yourself. Yes. How you get this lambda inverse? Yeah, yeah. But then the last thing is now actually this uh, gamma is transformed, and it's not partial. Mean. I'm a bit confused how like it's, it seems like you're linking a transformation of the partial mu with a transformation of. Uh, no, 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 no. So, so here uh, we uh, uh, we want to match one and two. Okay. So, so. The step is we do uh, how uh, each equation uh, for, uh, from equation one we reach here. From equation two, we just plug this into there. Okay, and so uh, so each equation have done one step, and then I equate. Them. Right, but I, I guess what I'm asking is like equation one has partial mu transform, and then that's how you get your uh, lambda inverse. And then equation two, you are transforming your gamma. No, 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 right? no, 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 no. You want to show this, you want to match this equation with this equation, okay? This equation is derived from one. So we want to derive, uh, we want to find the two from one. Okay, this equation one. So I just slightly rewrite the equation two by, by inserting this transformation here. Okay, then I match them. Other questions? Okay, good. Okay, good. So now, so now we can just uh, uh, um, now we can just immediately. So given this equation. And now we can immediately return the final transformation, okay? So with the final transformation, so, so for each, lambda mu nu, each finite, okay? You can obtain the corresponding omega mu nu, okay? And then this is also finite. And now we can just obtain the S by exponentiate this, okay? And then, then the corresponding S would be S equal to exponential minus I over Q omega mu mu sigma. Okay, and the sigma mu mu is given by this one, okay? So, and you can check yourself, this satisfies you can check this satisfies equation three. Okay. No. Uh, that's finite equation. Okay. Good. Any questions on this? Okay, good. So, so now let me. Uh, um, was there some? Okay. So now let's make some remarks. So, so then this S, it just generates a range transformation. Spin the space, okay? Because you only uh, act on this uh, 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 alpha and beta, okay? okay. So 
So sigma j, or sigma, sigma mu mu, or according to our standard uh, uh, terminology, this is called the generator of the transformation. Okay, so, uh, so these are the generators. Okay. So when when omega nu nu when the nu nu equal to spatial directions, and then that's corresponding to a space time ro uh, space spatial rotation. Okay, and the zero i corresponding to a boost. Okay, so remember. So so that means for for sigma aj, which is i equal to four. gamma i, gamma j, this generates generators of rotations. So, so remember previously, say if you remember uh, how we do the Lorentz transformation, the omega i, j would correspond to the rotational angle in the ij plane. Okay, so you just rotate in the ij plane by, by angle, uh, 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 um, yeah, or, uh, uh, omega uh, ij. So the, then, this, uh, then this just corresponding now corresponding to the generator of the rotations, okay, in the ij plane. So you can, because the gamma i and the gamma j are Hermitian, we call that the gamma i is Hermitian, and then the sigma ij is also Hermitian. Okay, because when you take the uh, take the dagger of these, i give you a minus sign, but the commutator give you a minus sign. Okay, the, the commutator give you a minus sign. So this is Hermitian. So that means that the s, which corresponds to a rotation. It's unitary, okay. So this is unitary. So this is, is a unitary matrix, okay. So now let's consider the sigma zero i, which corresponding to the generator for boost. So this will have the form gamma zero, gamma i. So this is the generators for boost. In i's direction. Okay, in the in the in the spindle space. Okay. And now because the remember gamma zero, when you take the dagger, you get the minus sign. So so the sigma zero i, now if you take the dagger. You actually also get the minus sign because the um, yeah, so now it's an anti hermitian Okay. So that means so that means the boost matrices. Okay. So uh, so this is a boost transformation. So this is a not unitary. This is not unitary. Okay. Okay. So this is not unitary. So so in general, so normally, as we said before, normally when you do a symmetry transformation, uh, uh, the transformation is unitary transformation. But in this case, actually, uh, yeah, this is a classical transformation. Okay. Uh, 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 here uh, uh, is actually not a unitary matrix. Okay. So this mean implies
So this implies that a stagger in general for general Lorentz transformation, say which including both say a rotation and boost, say S and S stagger is not equal to one. Okay. Okay, S stagger uh, 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 S is not equal to one. So this has very important consequences for, for example, for writing down an action for the Dirac equation. So, so far we only uh, 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 writing, uh, uh, wrote down the Dirac equation, but we did uh, remember previously we, norm uh, we normally start with the action first, and then from the action we derive the equation motion. But in this case, uh, uh, um, yeah, since this spinner is a completely new concept, we started with actually the equation, okay. But now if we want to write down an action, which is by definition should be Lorentz invariant, then we should construct quantities which are invariant on the Lorentz transformations, okay. And so, and so this, uh, 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 this property uh, then become a key, okay. Yes? So, like we're, so these are operators on the spinner space and we're talking about like permittivity and stuff, but like permission is with respect to an inner product. No, 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 here we are not talking about quantum mechanics. Here we're just talking about the equations, uh, uh, classical equations. Uh, 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 we are just talking about their matrix. They're just matrix. We are talking about their, uh, 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 whether they're unitary matrix or they're uh, 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 not unitary matrix. They're just ordinary matrices, four by four matrices. Other questions? Okay. So, um, so that means psi dagger psi. Okay, so psi dagger is a row vector, and this is a column vector, and all together this is a number. So this means this is not a scalar. So, so this uh, uh, transform under Lorentz transformation as psi dagger s dagger s psi. So that means this is not uh, since this is not equal to one, then this is not scalar under Lorentz transformation. Okay. So, so, uh, so now we have to search a little bit harder to, to, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, to find the scalar, okay? So yeah, in order to write the action, we need to find something which is invariant on our range transformation. So the so easy thing to think about is this quantity, okay? Because this automatically give you a number, okay? But this thing won't work, okay? So we have to search a little bit harder, okay. So to do that, let's, um, we can get some hints from the following identity, okay. So let's look at what this S dagger is really is, okay. So let's look at the property of S dagger. So, so, um, so recall that the, uh, I think I erased it. Yeah, so, so, so let me just write it again. So gamma mu dagger equal to gamma zero, gamma mu, gamma zero. Okay, so now let's try to find what's mu mu dagger. So let's write mu mu dagger in the uniform. So, so even though we wrote it uh, separately. So you can easily check yourself because of this property. So this is just given by minus gamma zero, sigma mu mu. Gamma zero, okay? Because this is just a commutator, so you can easily uh, work it out that you just get this, okay? So now we can find what uh, 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 what a stagger. So a stagger is equal to the exponential one half i omega mu mu, then sigma mu mu dagger. 
Okay? And then this is equal to I over 2 omega mu mu minus gamma 0 sigma mu mu gamma 0. Okay? So now, if you remember, gamma 0 squared is equal to minus 1. So whenever you have a such a situation, and, the, uh, uh, and the, because gamma 0 squared is equal to minus 1, then you can actually take the gamma 0 outside the exponential. So this is actually equal to minus gamma 0 exponential I over 2 gamma 0 mu mu. Okay. So, so if you just think you should do a Taylor expansion of this exponential, and then, then when you take the, uh, 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 the power of this, then for each term, the gamma zero at the end will pair with the gamma zero at the uh, beginning of the other term, and then they give you minus one, okay? And then you have uh, uh, only the first gamma zero and the last gamma zero left. And because that gives a minus one, that changes this minus sign to a plus sign, okay? So you just do a Taylor expansion, you will find here, okay? It's Taylor expansion you find here. And now we find the last relation. So we find that this is just minus gamma zero, and this is just equal to S minus one, S uh, gamma zero, okay? So we find that the S dagger is actually minus gamma zero, uh, S minus one. Uh, uh, um. Then this tells us, okay, for, uh, from this property, okay, tells us that this quantity, psi dagger gamma zero psi, should transform as a scalar, okay? So now let's take a look. So this, so this when you uh, 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 do a transformation, so this gives you the psi dagger, s dagger, then you have gamma zero, then you have s psi on the Lorentz transformation, okay? And now you plug in this into, uh, plugging s dagger equal to this into here. Yeah, you just get minus psi dagger, so this is gamma zero, S tag, S minus one, gamma zero, then gamma zero, S psi, okay? So this give you minus one, cancel with the one here, and then S one, cancel with S, uh, uh, S minus one, cancel with S, and then you have dagger, gamma zero, psi. Okay, so this actually, trans uh, it, it's Lorentz invariant. Okay, so this is Lorentz invariant. So now we find a, a, a nice Lorentz invariant quantity, okay? So since we use this all the time, uh, since we use uh, uh, this uh, all the time, so it's convenient to introduce a new notation. So, so now I introduce a minute to introduce we call psi bar you go to psi dag go to psi dagger. So here it's all just class this is dagger and it's all just matrix manipulation, okay? Uh, right now, we are uh, considering a classical theory. And uh, so, so it's convenient to introduce object like this, okay? And then, then we know that then psi bar, psi is a scalar. Okay, so, so that thing just becomes psi bar and psi, okay? So, so it's convenient to work out the, the how psi bar transform by itself 
Okay, so so you just use this relation, so you can check yourself. Okay, so so as an exercise for you to check yourself, on the range transformation psi bar, x is equal to psi bar prime x prime. Okay, so if you go to the new uh, psi bar prime x prime is equal to psi bar x s minus one. Okay, so you can easily check yourself. Uh, this relation, okay? Similarly, using the using this transformation of gamma uh, uh, partial mu, you can also trans check that the gamma mu partial mu so prime psi prime x prime equal to s gamma mu partial mu psi. Okay, so you can also check yourself or uh, uh, check this equation. Okay, so yeah, just the, uh, just by using these uh, properties of a stagger, uh, uh, yeah, just uh, uh, yeah, this you don't use the uh, uh, you don't need use for a property a stagger. Just use the uh, how partial mu prime transform and how psi transform, and then you can show this is true. Okay. Good. So, so this, also this gamma mu, partial mu will appear a lot because this appears in the uh, Dirac equation. So it's convenient to introduce a, a new notation. Say gamma mu partial mu, we define to be partial slash, okay? So, so essentially anything slash corresponding to that thing contract with gamma mu, okay? So, and then this equation then can be written as the, the partial prime slash psi prime x prime equal to s partial slash psi x, okay? Great. Um, so, so let me just mention one more thing you can uh, you can work out yourself. Okay, so you can check. So, so, so these are all things you can check yourself. Okay, when, uh, once you equip those transformations, you can also check that gamma psi bar gamma mu psi transforms as a vector. Okay? That means, that means psi bar prime x prime gamma mu psi prime x prime is equal to lambda mu nu psi bar x psi bar x gamma nu psi x. Okay? So if you view this whole thing as a vector, and then you see the prime, the quantity is equal to just a uh, 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 Lorentz transformation lambda uh, 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 on itself, okay? So again, this is something just based on the transformations of S and the relations between different gamma matrices, you can uh, 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 just show that. Good, any questions on this? Okay, so now with these preparations, we can now write down the, uh, uh, the action uh, uh, which give rise to the Dirac equation, okay? So, so the uh, uh, so now we can write down the Dirac action. So the action which gives rise to the equation equation. So I will just write down the answer. Uh, it's very intuitive. So you have just essentially s equal to minus i d4x psi bar 
gamma mu partial mu minus m psi. Okay, so this is the answer. So yeah, so so the the worry seems to uncompact here. So so first, just based on those relations, based on this is a scalar. This is a scalar, and the transformation of this. Okay, you can immediately see that this is a Lorentz scalar. Okay, because it only involves two variable, uh, one quantities, psi bar, psi with this m term, and then psi bar gamma mu partial mu psi, and uh, and that we already show here, that the uh, transform as s. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, you can easily check uh, uh, just based on those equations that this is a scalar. Okay. And this is Lorentz invariant. Uh, so the second thing is that this i here is for to make the action is real. Because you can show if you take the complex conjugate of this, you actually get the minus num uh, a minus sign, and so you need the i to make it real. Okay. And this minus sign which cannot be explained now, which we will uh, 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 talk about it later, uh, when we quantize the theory, and we see actually we need to put a minus sign here. Uh, yeah. The definition of uh, psi bar as like psi dagger gamma zero, yeah. it feels like we're singling out like the time dimension in like the definition, because like gamma zero, yeah. is, is, that, like, is that true, that we're singling out the time dimension? Yeah, we are, we are, we are not really singling out the time direction, it just, just due to the property that gamma zero is not a Hermitian. Okay. Yeah, just uh, because if you look at all these all this compli uh, uh, complications, it's it, it just related to that this S dagger is not, yeah, S is not unitary. And the reason S is not unitary is just because gamma zero is not a Hermitian. Yeah, so you have to put in the gamma zero in various places to compensate for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, other questions? Yes. So I guess uh, the action, if you wanted a, a Lorentz invariant, a Lorentz scalar, you could have constructed like some dot product of that object that transforms into that Hermitian, right? Um, yeah. So the psi yeah. bar gamma. So that would be alone. I guess this gives the right answer, but that that could have appeared. Which? Yeah, this appeared in action. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the. So because this is a vector. So when this contracts with partial mu, that gives you the uh, a scalar, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just so that gives you a scalar. Uh, so so yeah, you can understand that this is uh, in both ways. This transformer, uh, the fact this transformer vector is also related to here. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, I mean just yeah. Other questions? So, yes. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. But then, uh, but uh, but then you will have four size. So four size will give you rise to an interacting series. Yeah, that's right. Here I'm writing down a a a, a free series right now. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Okay. So so you can also see that this equation uh 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 give rise to the Dirac equation. Just imagine psi bar is independent of psi because this is corresponding to psi dagger. So if you do the variation of this one, you just automatically get the Dirac equation. Okay. Then you can also easily check by integration by part. Uh, and if you worry psi, you get the uh, the complex conjugate version of the Dirac equation and uh, uh, acting on the uh, psi bar. Okay. So so now let me just uh, say a few words on uh, on why you need the i here. So you can check. So, so here I'm listing some relations. Again, each of them you need to really write on the paper yourself, stare at it, uh, maybe do a little bit of derivation to get intuition about yourself. Okay, right now I'm just writing down those relations down. Okay, so you can also check yourself. That when you take the psi bar, psi dagger, okay? Again, just go through all this thing you find it's equal to minus psi bar psi. Okay, so, uh, uh, so this is just uh, two lines here. Uh, 
uh, I will not write, uh, write them explicitly for you. And similarly, you can check related to this, uh, the other term, that the gamma psi bar, gamma mu, partial mu psi, if you take the dagger. So here, so this one is slightly more complicated, okay? Uh, uh, but you can still just say, uh, you can just work it through. You find it's just equal to negative of itself. Then plus total derivatives. So this one is not exactly minus sign, but you have to throw away some total derivatives. The total derivatives, which give you, when you plug in the, into the action, they give rise to the boundary terms, and, but they will always assume the field vanishes at infinity, okay? So, so, uh, so, so that explains why you need this i, because when you take the, uh, 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 the complex conjugate of the, uh, the quantity here, you always uh, you get the minus. Good, any questions? Good, good, okay. So now it's getting a little bit awkward because our printer today broke. So, so I didn't print enough of my loads. So now I have to look at my computer uh, to, to remember my loads. So. Second. Okay, good. Ah. I have to find the location. Okay, good. So any questions on this? Okay, no, okay. So now let's move to the uh, next topic. So now, so this concludes our discussion of the Dirac equation. So we have derived the Dirac equation, uh, uh, by, uh, and also we have discussed how various quantities in Dirac equation should transform, and, uh, and also the finally the Dirac action, okay? So, so, so that, uh, the next step, the logic next step is to quantize, to go to the quantum field theory. So right now, so far, everything is classical. So, 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 so now the next step is that we want to uh, quantize this theory. And when we quantize this theory, we will see remarkably fermions, okay? So we will see fermions, we will see Pauli principle. And, uh, but, but before, but, but as we said before, that when we quantize the theory, we first list to, uh, uh, the simplest way is to first find this all its classical solutions, and then, then the classical solutions then become solutions to the operator equations, and then we can automatically quantize it, okay? So, so then before we actually do the quantization, uh, it's better we try to find the, uh, the, uh, all the classical solutions of the Dirac equation. And uh, so it's not like a klein golden equation, we can just immediately write down the solutions. And the Dirac equation is a little bit more intricate, so we uh, need to spend a little bit of effort to, uh, to write down the solution, uh, to find the, all the solutions of the Dirac equation. Okay, so that's what we will do. Unfortunately, we are not going to finish today, and then we will have a long spring break, so, <laughs> So I hope you still remember what we talked about today when you come back. Um, yeah. So, so this is. And the computing the wrong things. Okay, so now we have classical solutions.
Okay. So by construction, the Dirac equation has solutions we know must be proportional to this i k x with k square equal to minus m square. Okay. So this is by construction because we square it. We get the uh, we get the uh, uh, klein gordon equation. So this k mu would be omega k and the k. Okay. Um, but but this is not enough because the Dirac equation uh, because psi have four components. Okay. So so this just determines one factor of it. And we also have to determine its uh, 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 the behavior of all its four components. Okay, so uh, and uh, so now that's what we are going to do now. So we will separate the solutions into two types. So one type is we call i plus x, which goes one into u k x, say expansion i k x, and the other we call the psi minus x. Which goes one into v k x, v k yeah sorry uh, no x because it's a minus i k x okay so so yeah so so u k uh, uh, v k they just they all four component uh, spinners okay which have the same uh, 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 thing as psi because this is just some number so this because this is because k have the positive frequency okay. So this is some kind called the positive energy solution. And this is called the active energy solution. But it's the same thing as in the uh, uh, scalar case. They don't really, there's not really, uh, uh, when we quantize the theory, there's really no uh, elective energy excitations, okay? Uh, 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 it's just a lame, okay? So, uh, so uh, we call it the positive energy and negative energy just lame. So data physical excitations always have positive energy. Okay. So and this UK and VK, they're all four component complex vectors. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, 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 right, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, of psi, yeah, so this is just the uh, basis of solutions, indeed. Yeah, we should label them back. Yeah. Good, so, so this, the, uh, so essentially you just, in the scalar case, you just expand in terms of plane wave, and then you just get some constants. So here is a that bit of intricate, uh, uh, we have a vector, now we need to solve these vectors. Okay, so our goal is to solve these vectors. And then you just plug them into the Dirac equation. Okay, just plug these two into the Dirac equation, and then you get the equations for um, for the UK and the and the VK. Okay. And now I will also suppress the K in the in the U and the V. Uh, so so uh, just for rotation of simplicities. Okay. So when you have the gamma mu partial mu minus m psi equal to zero, you just plug psi plus plus minus in. And then you find the following equations for u is you get i k slash minus m u equal to zero and the i k slash and the minus yeah I think this is, let me just double check the sign. Yeah, indeed. So you get i k slash plus m v equal to zero. Okay, so you get these two equations. So our goal is just to solve those equations, okay? And the k slash, just as defined before, um, uh, it's it, it just defined as uh, in the partial slash, k slash equal to the mu. Okay. Good. So you can also work out their complex conjugate. So let me just write down the, uh, 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 the equations, because sometimes they will be used later, it's okay. So the u bar i k slash minus m equal to zero, the complex conjugate, and v bar 
I K slash plus M. Okay. So now let's try to work out the uh, uh, UK and the VK. by solving those equations. So, so we do this by, you can in principle do it by brute force. So after all, they just, these are just four by four equations, okay? Four by four matrix equations, uh, just linear algebra, okay? You can, uh, in principle, uh, we can all solve it. But the physicists often are lazy, okay? So we often still, even for the problem you can, you can solve, we still look for shortcuts. And so in this case, there are two possible shortcuts, uh, there are two possible ways we can do, okay? And uh, so, uh, so let me describe both ways. Uh, actually, uh, I think we only have time to describe one way. Uh, so, so to find the, the explicit form, U and V. So, so one simple thing to do is let's just consider in the simple case, say consider the particle is at the rest. When the particle is at the rest, then, then the omega is just equal to m, and then k equal to zero. Okay? And then that equation just become I m gamma zero minus m, u equal to zero, and i, m gamma zero, plus m, v equal to zero. Okay? Um, so, yeah, I think let me, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, I should have a minus sign here. Because of the, uh, because of the, um, is the k upper index, so is the k upper index equal to omega, then k lower index equal to minus omega, okay? And here, when we contract with gamma zero, we use the lower index, so, so we have a minus sign here. Okay, so, uh, so essentially this just become, so m can be canceled on both sides, so essentially it just become the, um, I gamma zero u equal to minus u, and I gamma zero v equal to okay. So this tells you so this just tells you essentially gamma u u it's the eigenvectors of v and v, they are just essentially the eigenvectors of gamma zero. Okay, they're just eigenvectors of gamma zero, okay? And so, so let's just now, to write them explicitly, so, so now let's uh, use the explicit representation of gamma matrices. Yeah, let me just copy this. So, so now let's use this representation with the gamma zero is equal to i zero, zero i minus i, and then gamma i is equal to zero, i sigma i minus i sigma i zero, okay? And then now if you plug in this gamma zero into those equations, and then you find that the equation for u and v become very simple. For the u just become zero, 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 one, u equal to zero. So again, this is two by two blocks, okay? Because this here is two by two blocks. And, uh, and for V, just the one, zero, zero, V equal to zero, okay? So that means U, you can just take it to be the upper. So that means the solution of this equation So that means that the solution of this equation for you, so now let me uh, uh, write the upper index zero, means that this is for the, for the zero momentum. So here we can just choose T1 
to be xi zero. So xi is some arbitrary two vector, okay? For v, we can just choose the lower zero eta, okay? So xi eta are arbitrary two vectors, two complex, two complex vectors. A two vector, two component vectors, two component complex vectors. Okay, so once you have u zero and v zero, uh, and we can choose a basis. For example, u zero one equal to zero one uh, one zero zero zero, and u. 0, 2 equal to 0, 1, 0, 0. And similarly for v0, 1, and v0, 2. Okay? So you can choose to be here, 1, and uh, Okay? So you can just choose as a basis, you can just choose the, 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 to be there. And now once you have So once you have, so once you have the uh, vector at k equal to zero, for general k, what do you do? Yes. Lorentz boost. Yes, just do a Lorentz boost. So we know the matrix S, and then you just for the general k, you just S u zero, and the v k S v zero. Okay, and then you can find the, the uh, behavior as general k. <laughs> but this is very, but this is easily said than do. Okay, do this actually is not quite easy. Okay, even though this sounds like a great idea. Okay, let's find the zero momentum and then let's just do a boost. That, uh, but but uh, but this step is still a little bit tedious. But it's still uh, it's doable and a little bit simpler than then solve uh, the original equation by brute force, okay? And, but there's, uh, again, still a lot of simpler method, which, in, which you can actually just guess the answer. You don't have to do any calculation. You can just guess the answer, guess the solution for the full equation, okay? And I, don't, uh, I think we don't have time to talk about it today, and so we will talk about it next time. And, uh, um, yeah. So, so hope you still remember what we talked about today when we come back, and uh, hope you have a good spring break. Yeah.